Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Shogun no Katana, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, goose you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Feudal Japan, where noble families are calling upon us, the uh, very skilled sword crafters, to make beautiful katanas and score lots of points. And I've got the game set up here as a two-player. I am the uh, yellowish player, tan player I suppose. Jen is the blue player. We've got our little sword crafting areas set up, our workshop and our family home. And um, as part of setup, each of us uh, in a reverse draft got access to one project that we could make. Mine, uh, which brought in three bucks for me, that's why I have three coins right from the get-go, will be worth four points when I finish this. Also, this particular katana will have a strength of three, which may or may not matter, depending on how um, in-game scoring works out for me. And to make this, I need two steel and four wood in that order to get this made. Jen, meanwhile, oh, and because this is, uh, it starts with steel, I have to put it in my workshop on my steel row right there. Right. And I put this little marker here as a reminder that this particular job is not for any particular family. After I finish it, I'll be able to pick one of the noble families over here that I can deliver it to. Alrighty. So anyway, so that's mine. Jen, she got a different one. Uh, this one needs one wood, one steel, and one leather. It'll get her three points. It started her with three bucks and has a strength of one. So this needs a little bit less resources. Mine needs five. Jen only needs three, although leather is more expensive. And alright, so this, because it starts out with wood, starts on her wood line in her shop, where she has two wood. We also have one um, steel waiting to be built, or to deploy to build these katanas. And we are ready to go. I am the first player, and so I'm going to take my first worker and uh, send him somewhere out here into the countryside, over to the Emperor's Palace, over to visit the noble families to get more jobs, over to the Academy to uh, learn the fine art of decorating our swords so we can make them worth even more, or over here to the market where we can get the resources we need to actually make these. All right, and before I go on, let me just stop and uh, just say how much I love the look of these miniatures. They are just awesome. And, uh, you know, that's my regular worker. This is one of my family members who can be um, deployed out over to the, um, what do you call it, the, the palace. And my decorating, even, you know, even the decorators look really, really cool, wonderfully detailed. All right, so my first worker, where am I going to go? Well, I have three coins right now, which is nice, but I'd like a bit more cash. And if I come over here and visit the noble families and take on a job to do another sword, they pay up front. Actually, I'm going to jump in here to say that that's actually not historically accurate. The uh, noble families did not pay up front for work. And the reason I know that is kind of interesting. I thought it was worth mentioning. I so appreciate that the rulebook for Shogun no Katana takes the time all throughout to actually talk about the real history of feudal Japan. Uh, where they point out when the mechanisms are actually true to life, and they also point out when they've actually had to take um, creative liberties with the true history to make the gameplay work. And that's awesome! Because I think it shows a way for other publishers to move forward. When you are dealing with historical content of games, there is no reason to keep that history at arm's length and not take the opportunity to allow me to become more well-rounded and knowledgeable about that time period. And sure, if you have to make changes for, you know, gameplay? Just point that out. Just explain, and by the way, this is how it really worked. Shogun no Katana's rulebook actually comes with a big old section devoted to the history. And it's great, and I hope more publishers take a hint from, um, from, from this game, because this makes history come alive, and it just makes the game much more engaging, I think. But anyway, back, uh, back to the run-through. Uh, but anyway, so... I could visit any of the four households, and by the way, I'm playing a two-player game, so this space, this space, this space, and this space would only be in a four-player game. There would be another sword here, but since we're playing a two-player game, there are only eight 
sword projects, two in each of the families, that I could go and try to pick up. So which one do I want? Well, I'm doing this both to give myself another job, but also to give myself some money. This one, if I take this job, this is a tough sword, it'll give me um, six coins right off the bat. So will this one, because you can see they have a lot of steps and they require, so it's, it's going to take a lot of work to get it done. So if I want a lot of money, I probably want to grab this uh, contract to make a katana or this contract because they give the most money up front. But there's another decision I have to make. If I go to this family to take either this one or this one, I will get this bonus card which is something that I can use when I go visit the palace. On the other hand, if I come over here, I'll get this bonus card, which is something that I can use when I go to the academy to decorate. So, I want a big fancy job, and I think I'd rather have this bonus for the palace rather than this bonus for decoration. So, I, oh, but actually, interestingly, these are both big jobs. This one, we need some lacquer, some wood, some steel, some wood, and some steel. This needs two leather, steel, wood, steel. So, really, am I going to focus on one that needs leather or one that needs lacquer? Lacquer is more expensive, but it needs less. Let's go, let's, let's go for the lacquer. All right. So, I have taken this job. And uh, this job was for the, uh, the Green Noble family, which means I take one of their flags and put it on here as a reminder that I'm making this for them. I immediately get six bucks. So here's five and six. And now I'm rich. Rich, I tells you. And I put this to work in my workshop on, as you can see, the first step is going to be lacquer. So I have to put it on my lacquer line over there. All righty. So, and let's not forget... I get this bonus card, which has two functions. When I visit the palace, I will get an extra family member to uh, try to influence the Shogun and all that. Plus, after I do that, if I pay three bucks, I can permanently upgrade my um, studio to produce leather for me that I can use in subsequent jobs. All right, so I've got this little bonus card, and uh, that was my first turn. That is the way worker placement works. Uh, we are going to play this game over one, two, three, four rounds. And in each round, we, at the beginning of the game, have four workers apiece. And I've just used my first one. Now... As I am making swords, once I finish a sword, hey, the first sword, hey, that's great. But if I finish my second sword, uh, my operation increases and I'll get another worker. If I finish my fourth sword and my fifth sword, I'll get two more workers to get more stuff done. But we'll have to wait and see if I can get that far. I mean, making five swords, that's a lot of effort. It's possible you can make 80 or even more, but you have to work really hard just to even get your fourth sword done. Um, because... It's a, it's a slow and exacting process to make these things. So anyway, so I've got all these workers. I've got my three family members. This is also my Shogun no Katana, um, the blueprint for making my special sword that we will offer to the Shogun as a gift to score tons of points. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. It is the name of the game, though, so it's something i got to think in the back of my mind. All righty, so I have done my first of... Of four worker actions in this first round of the game. And obviously, this space is blocked, so Jen couldn't go there. She could still come here and get this one if she wants, but where is she going to go? Well, she is the blue player. And again, I just love these miniatures. They are so cool looking. Where is she going to go? All righty. Hmm. Well, Jen would also like to get some more cash, although she started with a little bit more than me. She got the three from her starting job, plus one more. And... And it's interesting, Jen sees that I just got this that's going to give me a bonus when I eventually go to the palace. So Jen figures, oh, he's going to go to the palace, isn't he? Maybe she should jump over here to the palace first and be the first to uh, you know get her foot in the door. Now, again, I'm playing a two-player game, so this space and this space are off limits. There are only three opportunities every round to go to the palace, and Jen has just taken one of them. Now, what happens when we go to the palace is we grab one of our family members, and this is the first time Jen has done this, put it on any one of these tiles, and then we get to activate all the tiles where we have put family members. So the first time, I'm only get one of these palace actions. Second time, I'll put a new family member down, and hey, I could get two actions. And you can see these two 
two combo. This one gives two bucks, and this one you can spend two bucks to get some lacquer, which is half price. Uh, this one lets you work on a sword. This one lets you increase your ability to decorate. This one just gives you some steel straight out. So by, by visiting here, Jen is going to get one of these actions. And by the way, the game comes with a few more of these. Every time you play, you're going to get a different assortment of bonuses you can get when you go visit the Shogun's Palace. So does Jen want some steel? She already has the steel and the wood she needs for the sword she wants to make. She needs some leather, and she can't get leather at the palace. So that's not going to help. Just two bucks is always worth it. She could start working on her one sword right now. That's interesting, too. Or she could get better at decorating, or she could get some steel. I think she's just going to take the money. Alrighty. So... First, you um, when you come to the palace, if all three of your family members aren't here, you add another one. So the third time you come to the palace, you'll have all three family members. After you've added a new one, you can move them around. So this uh, family member, on uh, next time Jen comes to the palace, could move over here if she wants, or could stay there. And then you activate them. And in this case, Jen gives herself two more coins. Woohoo! Okay, now. There's another thing about the palace. Whenever any player goes there and puts a family member and activates, all other players get to activate one of their family members as well. And here's the problem. I haven't visited the palace yet. By Jen rushing out and going to the palace first, she has now fixed it. She knows I'm going to want to go to the palace because I get this bonus for doing it, which means when I go there... You know, I'm going to get to put a family member out, plus I can play this card to get a virtual family member, uh, which is this little token right here. So it's like I've got two family members there. But Jen's going to make more money passively off of my action, which means Jen's just made it a little bit less attractive for me to go to the palace. It's interesting. The palace and the academy, they both affect all players. All play players get a benefit when one player goes to these. When you go visit the noble families or when you go to the market, only the, that player gets stuff. But these ones are a bit more interactive. So, that was Jen's first turn. She visited the palace, and she kind of stole my thunder, because I was totally going to come over here. And I could still, but all I know, I know that means Jen is going to passively get two more coins on my turn. And I would then put my family member, I could come here and get some money as well. Plus, if I play this bonus card I earned, I can. it's like I have another family member. Now, you cannot have multiple family members of yours on the same space. They have to be spread around. Ah, uh, so am I going to do that now? Jen kind of beat me to the punch there. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. Because really, remember, I took this job that needs lacquer uh, to make that sword. Lacquer normally costs four coins, but having two family members here means effectively I can get that lacquer for free and save myself four bucks. So I'm coming here. Um, which means I'm going to take one of my family members and I'm going to come over here and join Jen's family member so I can make some money. And I'm going to play this card right now and get the virtual family member to come here. So that means I am going to make two coins, but then I'm immediately going to spend it to get the lacquer. And I'll put that up here in my shop. So now I've got the lacquer I need for the first step, and I've got some steel that I need for the first step of that. I can start working on both of these swords now. And, but... Bummer, Jen also gets two coins. I've just made her a little bit richer. And in the early game, money is tight. Although by the end of the game, you could be drowning in cash depending on how you evolve. And we need this money because it's expensive to go shopping. But there's another thing we can do as well. So anyway, though, that was my turn. Oh, wait. Oh, one more thing I have to bear in mind. This card, I played it, which means I got to deploy the virtual family member. So I got a little bit of extra action. And remember, I have to decide, do I want to spend three coins now to upgrade my workshop so that it will generate leather for me passively. I will. Okay. And if I don't, this card is gone. I have to choose right now. I can't keep it. You know, when I use one half of the card, I have to decide right then whether I'm going to use the other half. By the same token, anytime I want, I could have just spent three to put this in place, and then I'd have to decide, well, I better visit the palace. Because you, I mean, once you've used one side or the other, it's gone. So I want to make the most use of this. I'm going to spend three coins... And uh, that's okay, because I made a bunch when I uh, took on this other job. And now I got full use out of this card, which means I take it, the leather side, and I am going to install it in my workshop. And I can basically slide it under the board such that it will generate leather for me when I complete a sword in... If I put it here, if I complete a sword in this row, which means the sword will have had to work its way all the way over here... If I finish a sword in this row, I get four coins, 
one steel, and because of this upgrade, I would also get one leather when a sword is finished in this row, as an example. And now, it's tough to make a sword that finishes in that row. Um, let's see. Although, actually, yeah, I could, because this sword is going to go um, one, two, three, yeah, one, two, well, actually, I could do that, but I don't have to put it. I'm sorry, in this column, I could put it in a row, um, because all I'm deciding is where do I want these swords where um, to f end up so that I can get this passive bonus. If this sword ends up over in this space, it's going to get me a wood and two coins, as an example. Now, there's no randomness to this. I know where these coins are going to, or these swords are going to end up because they follow a very specific. Um, they have they have basically programmed. First I put steel, and then steel, and then wood, wood, wood. What that means is the first time I'm going to put steel to start working on this, it's going to move to the right, um, closer to the steel. And I'll take this steel and I'll put it in. And then I'm going to need more steel. The next time I work on it and I have steel, it'll move to the right again. Then the next time I work, um, you know, after I've gotten the two steel, it's going to need wood. I would have to take the wood and it would have to slide up into the wood column. And then the next time, it'll slide over here. And then the final time, it'll slide over here. I know the exact path through my workshop that this is going to follow. I know when this sword is finished, it will be ending in this spot. And that's why if I put this leather here, then I, not only would I get four coins for completion of this, but I'd also get some more leather that I could use on another um, you know, sword down the road. Instead of having to spend three coins in the uh, market to get it. So, I have to decide where does that go? Mm, well, if I want to make the most use of it, I need to think about how my other sword is going to get built as well. This one starts on the lacquer. When it gets one lacquer, it'll move to the right. When it gets a, when it gets wood, it'll move down here. Then when it gets its steel, it'll move down here. Then it needs another piece of wood that'll take it back up here. And then finally, another steel, it'll end down there. So I know um, that basically means well, I, I can't put this in a place that would benefit both of these swords, as an example. But I could be putting it in a place that will benefit more swords. If I look back at the swords that are available that I might be grabbing in the future, basically, this one ends in the wood line. This one ends in the wood. This one ends in steel. Ends in wood. Ends in wood. Ends in steel. Ends in steel. I think, I think then, with that in mind, I already have one sword that I know is going to end on the wood line. I have one I know is going to end on the steel line. I think I'm going to get this one done sooner than that one. So I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to put this over here. And so now, when I eventually finish this sword, or any sword that ends on this row, I will get an additional leather, which is basically like making three bucks. All right. So anyway, I haven't made anything yet. Let's put these back where they started. All right. So, but that just gives you a little bit of a sneak peek of how complex the th planning goes into this game. Because, as you might imagine, as these swords move around, you might get some traffic jams and they bump into each other. And that's a big part of the planning. But I'll worry about that when I actually start making some swords. So anyway, so I got that little bonus. Um, and that was my second worker placement action. It is Jen's turn to go again. And I think she'll go get uh, another sword contract as well. Uh, so she can get a bit more cash. Although she's already got plenty, thanks to me. So, um, I think she likes this one. So, all right, uh, this is going to give her six immediately. So she's even richer now. And let's see, this is with the uh, purple family. So this is a job she's doing for them. It'll have two strength, which may or may not matter at the end of the game. This starts with leather. It needs leather, steel, leather, steel, wood. So she puts it here on her leather line. And she doesn't have any leather. She's going to need some leather. In fact, she needs three leather, ultimately. She needs one for this, and she needs two for both of these. Uh, so she might go shopping pretty soon. But let's not also forget, she gets the top bonus card. And now, this one it basically gives her a bonus whenever she goes to the Academy to decorate existing swords. She will increase her skill at decorating one more. Plus, if she pays two coins at that point, she can also lock this in as another way to earn steel. The same way I lock this in as a way to earn leather. So, Jen has that to her name. So, that was her turn. And now it is my third turn. The first round is a half over. And... Let's see here. So, I've got the lacquer I need. I've got the steel I need. So, um, I could actually start working and get the first steps of both of these swords done. That might be interesting. Um, 
I, so I could have my worker come back over to my workshop. And the way this works is, if you are going to run your workshop, you put your worker at the beginning of any row or column. So if I put my worker right here, you then build on every sword that's in that row or column in whatever order you want. So if I go there, I can do the first stage of this sword and this sword. And like I described before, this will move over here, and then this will move over here, and they are on their way. So I could do that. Yeah, in fact, let's do that. Let's go on ahead and start working. Although, I, I, I think I briefly mentioned these monks. So, I have four workers right from the get-go, as does Jen. All players start with four workers. I can get more workers once I finish some swords. So I want to finish them as soon as I can. There are other workers available for me. Over here, there are monks. Two of them in each player's color. And these are workers I can spend coins to get so I can do more in a given round. In the first round, it costs five coins to hire one of these. And um, so that means you're going to get more work done. And they are better workers than normal because they give you a bonus. So let's do that. Remember, I've still got six bucks left over. I'm going to spend five to hire this monk. And, um, he's gonna, and they get more expensive. In the fourth round, they cost 12. They get crazy expensive. Um, but, hey, every you know, when you're near the end of the game, you are desperate for a last few couple of bonus actions, and those monks could really come in handy. So instead of using my regular worker to um, do the first stage of my swords, I'm going to have a monk do it. Get to work, pal! And he says, okay, boss. And so here we go. Um, now, I can work on either of these in any order. I'll go ahead and do the top one first. Remember, I had this lacquer that I got at the palace for free. Thank you very much. And be, uh, that means this moves one step. And now I have the one steel that I started with, and this moves one step. Boop. Okay. And now, as you can tell, on the next round, um, if I, say, put a worker here, I could activate both of these again. But... Because I went with the monk, wherever you go, the monk gives you a bonus. And if you have your monks work in your workshop, after you have activated, or before or after you activate the entire row or column that you chose, they get to do one more build on a single one. So, let's have him go on ahead and do one more build, and do the second stage of this. So now this has got a second, so it slides down here. Okay, so this is now two-thirds of the way built. Hoorah! We're on our way. Looking pretty good. And the next time I put somebody here, I could activate both of them. Um, and so, and this will move to the right. And this will move to the right. And isn't that cool? Because here's the deal, folks. If I hadn't used this monk, say, and instead I'd used a worker, right? They'd both move here. So that's pretty cool. But, and then if I used another worker... They'd move again, this would move down over, and this would move down, and then they wouldn't be in lockstep anymore. And it would require two separate workers to activate them separately. So, the beauty of this move is because I used a monk and I skip to the second, now these are going to stay in lockstep a little bit more. They are both... Um, oh, wait. Oh, I miscalculated. I was going to say, this. I was going to move this to the right, except it's not. The next step is actually, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, steel? But that's okay. When I eventually send a worker over here, I'll activate this, and it'll move closer. And this wants a steel, it'll move down here. And so they're still in line, so that then I could come over here and activate them both at the same time again. This is a huge part of the game. Figuring out the puzzle of how to run your workshop and get multiple steps done with a single worker. Uh, because if you have your swords all cattywampus, it's very difficult to work efficiently. So, that's why this guy moved down here, and now I'll be able to keep um, moving them in unison. Although, neither of these could be built again, because I need two steel. I need a steel for the next step of both of them. And then, I need two wood for the next step. So, maybe it's time to go shopping. But, um, that was definitely worth spending that five bucks, so I could get that extra bonus move, so that these two swords could stay in sync. Alrighty then. Alright, so, it is now Jen's third turn. Or actually, so this is interesting, I still got two workers. Uh, because I spent and I got the extra, Jen might finish this round before I do. Although there is an upside to that. Because as soon as somebody passes, they have no more workers, they're not paying uh, monks anymore. As part of setup, two 
honor cards came out. And these are in-game scoring cards. Whoever passes first gets to pick whichever one they want. Whoever goes last gets the leftovers. And this is saying, hey, get three points at the end of the game for every sword that used leather. This is saying get four points for every sword that used lacquer. One of the reasons I chose this lacquer was because, hey, I knew I could get some free lacquer um, at the uh, palace. Plus, I'm hoping to get this because this will make my sword worth an additional four points because it's got because it has lacquer. But if I because I've done this, Jen might pass now, and she might take this and keep the better card away from me um, because she whoever passes first gets to choose first. All right. So what has Jen got in mind now? You know what? Um, Jen has a couple of swords she'd like to start working, but remember she needs a lot of leather and she's made a lot of money. I think she's going to be the first to go visit the market. It's shopping time. Okay. And as you can see, um, again, uh, only three spots, only three opportunities to go shopping in a given round. And Jen could buy all the wood she wants for one, all the steel for two, all the lever for three, and the lacquer for four. But more importantly, in addition to whatever shopping Jen's going to do, Jen gets one of these two cards. And these work the same as the one you saw that I got from the Noble Families. If Jen takes this this card, whenever she hires a monk, she in the first round, she gets a 2 discount. In the last round, she gets a $9 discount. Basically, this card means that whenever Jen chooses to hire a monk in the future, it only costs 3 because it's huge discount. So if Jen holds on to this for the whole game and in the fourth round doesn't have 12 bucks, she could use this then and get a monk when she's really desperate for some final moves for only 3 Oh, if only that were so. I gotta jump in here to uh, correct that, because that was a pretty big mistake. Uh, as always, folks, please watch the Klingon subtitles. Paulo already pointed this out, but I wanted to say that I was misreading the card. The negative nine doesn't mean it takes $9 off of the $12 purchase price. It replaces the $12 purchase price with a $9 purchase price. So basically, this card gives you a three-coin discount no matter what round you're in from start to finish. Uh, just, I thought that was a big enough one to point out. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to it. Plus, when Jen uses this, if she also pays three coins, she can lock this in and turn her shop into a money maker. In the same way that my shop has now been turned into a leather maker. So, Jen decided, you know what? These are both great, but Jen really wanted this so she can get a big discount when she starts using her monks. Unlike me, I paid full price. And, um, oh no, she could take this one instead. And this one says, when she makes completes a sword, double its points. And that's huge too. Um, you know, Jen's got this sword that's going to be worth six points when she makes it. If she has this and plays it at that moment, she would make 12 points off that sword. And that's a huge deal also. But I think Jen um, really likes having this in her back pocket so that when she eventually gets a monk, she can get them super duper cheap. All right, so anyway, so she did that and she's going to do some shopping. Now, as I recall, she needed one, two, three total leather. So let's, uh, yeah, was that right? Yeah, three leather. So let's pay through the nose. Five, was it leather? Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Ouch to get the three leather she needs to make her two swords. Leather, leather, leather. All right, so, and these go on into her leather. Uh, so now she's got all the leather she needs. Um, she needs two more steel to uh, complete these. She's got one, she needs two more. And uh, steel costs two apiece. So if she spends four, one, two, three, four, that gives her two steel, okay. And she adds this to her workshop. So now she's got the three steel, she's got three leather. She needs a total of two wood. Jen has everything she needs to make both of these swords. But she still has one coin left if she wants to keep shopping. Although the last thing she could buy would be some more wood. You know what? She's going to need it. She's going to spend her last bit and just get some wood and add that to her shop as well. Even though these swords aren't going to need it, she's going to need it eventually. So she had a very, very effective shopping trip. Uh, kind of cleaned them out. She got the uh, one she wanted. And since she's now broke again, she's going to need it. And then uh, at the end of her turn, a new card comes out. This is an interesting one. This says, hey, whenever you play it, decorate a sword and make money off it immediately. So that's a pretty cool one too. Okay. So that was Jen. Jen only has one more turn this round. Alrighty. And I've still got two. And Jen, even with her big discount, she can all of a sudden no longer afford a monk. Because she just, you know, blew all of her cash. Alright, so it's my turn. And I could go shopping too. 
because again, what do I need? I need um, two. I need three steel and one, two, three. I need three steel and three wood to be able to complete both of these. Although, there's an important thing to remember, folks. When you complete a sword, remember, you get resources. When I complete this sword, I will get a steel. And that could be a steel I use for the other sword. When I complete this sword, I'll get a wood, which could be the, the uh, wood I use for that sword. So I don't strictly need all of that. But I have another thing I could do as well. I don't have to finish these right now. I could go to the academy and learn the fine art of decoration. And I think now is a good time to do this. Because remember, um, when you go to the palace, everybody gets a bonus. The same thing happens when you go to the academy. But if I go here right now before Jen did, Jen will not benefit like she normally would. So let's start decorating. Okay, and now if I had, if I had this card. I could play this uh, because I am doing the decoration action and become even better at it, but I don't. I don't have any bonuses. I'm just decorating. And what does that mean? Well, there I can decorate the leather, the steel, the wood, or the lacquer um, on my swords and make them worth more points. I now, because I've come here, I'm the first player to come here, I get to pick any one of these four building materials and get better at decorating. Let's see. I'm planning... I am planning, I'm hoping, to get this and do lacquer. That's why I have the lacquer. So why don't I get better at lacquer? All right, I am the tan player. So I've gotten a little bit better at it. Although, the first step doesn't mean anything. Um, a, a, a sword, a katana that has uh, decorated lacquer is worth one point. It's still worth one point. But if I upgrade this again, it'll be worth two... Or I'm sorry, not points. Do, uh, coins. It'll be worth two or even three the more I improve in this regard. So I'm going to try to be decorating lacquer over the course of the game. Or am I? Yeah. No. Yeah, sure. Fine. Okay. Okay. So I've done that. Now, that's the first thing I get to do when I come here. The second thing I get to do if I'm the player to come here is I get to do one decoration of lacquer, wood, steel, and leather. I get to do one of each. And that's what I'm going to do right now because... Well, unfortunately, I could do all four if I had all four materials on the swords I was working on. Now, unfortunately, I've only got three, but I'm going to decorate this lacquer, this wood, and this steel. So I'm going to make both of these swords much more... Now, neither of these swords would ever have leather, so it's not like I was going to get to decorate the leather anyway. So to decorate, what you do is you take the boring old um, wooden cubes off, uh, you know, this red and this brown, and you replace them with the translucent cubes. Oh, yeah. So now I've got decorated lacquer and a decorated wood. And over here, I've got decorated steel. So both of these swords have now hugely increased in value when I eventually get them done. And, I mean, there's still the opportunity to um, decorate wood on this one. Um, you know, this needs three wood. You can only decorate the wood once because it's assumed that, hey, if I, decorate, if I put one decorated wood cube, it applies to all of them. So I could make this even more decorated. But I'm pretty happy with that. And um, the lacquer isn't worth more yet. But if I keep on improving, the lacquer will be worth even more if I upgrade that a little bit more. So, that was me decorating. And now, the bonus is, Jen would get to be able to do one decoration of her choosing. But the problem is, her swords don't have any materials on them. So, she can't decorate them at all. And so, that's why I went here now, so that Jen would not get a benefit. The same way Jen rushed out to the palace to make sure she got a benefit when I went. Uh, you know, and um, I didn't when she went there. So, I have decorated, and uh, that has paid off pretty well. Okay, it is Jen's last turn of the round. So, what is she going to do? Is she going to start... She's got all the stuff she needs, so she could start working on these swords. Or, Jen could go visit this family and get six coins, which means she'd be able to hire a monk and do more work this round. I think that's what she's going to do. Uh, this is the best one. It's worth six. Um, although, no! Here's the problem. The first step of this requires leather. This space is occupied. She cannot do that sword. She would have to go and get a sword that starts with steel or lacquer. And this one starts with steel, but it would only give her four coins, which is not enough to hire. Although, remember, 
Jen could use this discount so she could get a Monk going in this first round, but she would rather wait until this card is worth three or five or nine coins uh, later in the game. So, yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, right, so this one would give her five, but again, it goes into the leather spot. So I think Jen is not going to go visit any family members. She could go doing decoration, but there'd be no point because she hasn't worked on these at all yet. She could go shopping again, although she has no money. She could go shopping just to get another one of these cards. She could go to the palace again, which means she'd get her second family member. Oh, by the way, this virtual family member is gone now. And so she could come over here and get some more steel, and she can move over here, so she could do decoration improvements, etc., etc. But nope, I think it's Jen's last turn. She is going to do the same thing as uh, I... She is going to start working. So she puts one wood on this, slides on over. And she puts one leather on this, and it slides on over. And so Jen has done her first stage, and Jen has a problem. Because the uh, next time, if she had any more workers... And say she wanted to go like this. Because she has all the resources. This needs a steal. And this needs a steal. If she tried this, this, say, would move into position. And now this one can't move. And she's got a traffic jam. And she cannot work efficiently. So with one worker, she would only do one stage. So Jen has a problem. Jen has created... She um, And so, one way to deal with that is using a monk like I did, if she goes over to the monk, she could move this one first, and then say, hey, this would move... Oh, uh, it's interesting. This would want to move down to the leather, and if you have two that are right next to each other, they can literally swap places like that. So that's one way Jen could take care of this problem she's created for herself. Another way is over here at the palace. Because if you send a family member to the palace, you can do one bonus work for free. So Jen could say, you know, build this so that then when she puts one here, they'll swap places and everything will be good. And by the way, when she does that, this sword will also be complete. When Jen does complete this sword, she will get three points for it. Plus, since it'll be down here, this is where it's going to end up, she'll get three coins and she'll get another leather. Which means... Which means she should have saved her money. Because she didn't need to buy all that leather. She was going to get leather off of this. And this one's going to be finished before that one. Yeah, that was dumb. Jen should not have bought that leather. She should have saved her money. Um, because this will give her the last leather she needs. And so you can see how um, sword completion can combo into other swords as well. So anyway, so... Jen is, she's um, done the first stage of both of those, and before she does the second stage, she's going to want to resolve this uh, roadblock. And as you can imagine, the more swords you're working on, if you've got three or four or five swords out here, and you're trying to ideally get them all lined up so you can activate multiples, that can become a very challenging puzzle indeed. So that was Jen's last turn. I've got one more turn, and um, I'd love to go shopping, but I'm broke. So I think... I will take another job. I'll go on ahead and get this six coins, just so I'm set up in the future. And I will become better at decorating in the future. And I uh, see, so this is, although here's a problem. I don't want to work for this family again. I do not want to do that because um, there's a set collection I want. At the end of the game, you get more points for having unique sets of all the families. So I really. And I really should work on a lacquer one, but there aren't any lacquer. I'll work on this one down here instead. It gives me five coins instead of six. Starts right there. And this is a new family. It's the uh, blue family. And it gives me this. When I go shopping, I will get three wood for free. Nice. And so there we go. And that gave me five, which is still nice. And the first round of four is over. At the end of the round, we move on to the next. We get our workers back. New swords come out. Oh, and I forgot. When Jen passed, she could take whichever honor she wanted. She's already working on a leather-based sword. And she's she's got two. So this is six points to her right off the bat. But if she takes this, she's going to give this to me. And I don't have any leather. No. Um, so I think she will just stick with the thing that's strong for her. And then when I passed, I got this. So these are in-game scoring cards. And so at the end of the round, new honor comes out. This one um, wants at least three decorations on a sword. 
And uh, this one has to do with how many spaces you've moved around the score track by the end of the game. So we have these, we get our workers back, new swords come out, and uh, we go on to round two, and the game gets bigger and more complex and more puzzly as we continue with Shogun no Katana. And now, folks, before I get to final thoughts, please remember this was a paid Kickstarter preview. She's taking my subjective opinions with a grain of salt. And with that out of the way... I gotta say, this is fantastic, folks. Jen and I loved this game. We had so much fun playing it. And really, the beating heart of it is this cool, cool puzzle of trying to maintain um, your positioning as you work through all the different stages of your swords. The more swords you have going, the more opportunity you have for really good, efficient moves. Um, but the more problems there are as things start to kind of clash into each other and you've got to figure out how to move them around. Now, i got to admit, just this game could have been the entire game itself. Just the workshop, because that is so much fun. Um, but that just becomes the basis for a very good worker placement game as well. Full of tension, lots of really nice elements. The idea of uh, two of the four worker placement spots, if one player goes there, everybody else gets a bonus. So timing on those spaces is hugely important. Um, and as well, the fact that you've got workers, you get bigger and you know a, a bigger and bigger workforce, the more work you get done. So that could be a big strategy. Just make quick, short, cheap katanas that won't get you much, but will get you more workers for a big... Or just spend your whole game working on a couple of really amazing katanas. Get them totally decked out with uh, uh, you know decorations so they can be huge paydays. Um, and along the way, just make enough money to keep doing extra work without, ever, without increasing your family size by just hiring these monks. And um, I didn't even talk about the Shogun no Katana, which is Japanese for um, the Shogun Sword. Uh, you know, this is a programmable one where you can make this whatever you want. Every time you complete a sword, you take some of the cubes that were part of it and you put them over here in the Shogun area, or you take matching ones, I should say, and you, you put them over there in the Shogun area, and whenever you want, provided you've done at least one of each of the five resources, you can start working on this, and you've programmed it to go through the maze of your workshop any way you like. And these can be hugely, um, you know, uh, big scores at the end of the game. And in fact, the tiebreaker of the game is all about them and all of that. So that's an extra level of complexity. You could win this game never making a sword for the, uh, the Shogun, actually. Or your whole game could be about that, or just about getting a bigger workforce, making more money, leveraging these... Um, what do you call them? Leveraging all these bonus cards. There's a lot of variety there as well. Going for set collection, doing working for a lot of unique families. It's it's got a ton going on. Every time you play, you're going to get a different layout of uh, the 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 Shogun's Palace, the the bonus cards that come up, and the swords. And yeah, all of it circles around this awesome, gorgeous designed little puzzle game and everything else rise to the occasion too it's only four short rounds in this game and it, at the beginning of the game it feels like oh my gosh you can barely get anything done but by the end of the game you are moving mountains because you've got so much money you're hiring the monks you're using all the special bonus powers it is super sharp no pun intended and it is a blast jen and i have very 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 much enjoyed our time with shogun no katana and that was the preview folks thanks very much for watching have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.